Benjamin Franklin once said, the bitterness of poor quality remains long after the sweetness of low price is forgotten. The fact is, quality matters. Join us as we make quality fun, interesting, and accessible to companies of all levels. Quality matters is a must listen for all things quality. Listen in, ask questions, and get back to doing what matters most. Quality Matters, brought to you by Texas Quality Assurance, where quality management gets simplified. Well, hello and welcome back to the Quality Matters podcast. I'm Kyle Chambers with Texas Quality Assurance and joining us, well, sort of joining us today, we, we've got a disembodied voice from a Caleb. Hello. Videos decided not to work again. If you remember here a few episodes back, we had to like record this thing four or five times. So we're just going to not re-record and roll with the problems today. I, I guess uh, somehow, somewhere, someone doesn't want us talking about uh, this topic. So we are finishing up our episode series, I guess you'd say, on uh, on Boeing. Turned out to be a much more um, fascinating topic, I guess, than uh, we might originally thought. And so for today's episode, we are bringing in Michael Mills. He's been on the podcast before, and Michael... Give yourself kind of a a quick introduction and tell us about uh, some of the research you've done here. Yeah. Okay. Um, Michael Mills, I write a blog at Pragmatic Quality Blog um, and am always looking for topics to write about and people to argue with. I mean, discuss with. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Come on, it's the internet. That's all we do is argue. Even if we agree, we we have to see which one of us is more right than the other. I've, I've, I've had, I've had conversations where I was, I agreed with the other person, but they didn't like the words I used. Yes. Um, and, that, that's you know, the most fun. Yeah. But, but, you know, it's, um, honestly, conversation is a wonderful thing. So what I've been looking at, um, <clears throat> is about a year ago, the, we've had a lot of discussions about Boeing safety culture. And about a year ago, the FAA actually put together an expert panel to go study just that. And they spent a year at it. That went from March of 2023 to February this year. Uh, Really? It was not 40 hours a week, but it was, you know, this was something they were doing in addition to their day jobs, whatever they were, but they would go <laughs> spend a couple hours a week. Yeah. But, but <clears throat> they interviewed hundreds of people. They read thousands of pages of documentation. They went up and down through the company to understand what the um, Boeing safety culture was about, how it was working. Okay. And then came away with this big fat report that um is it's written in auditories so um (laughs) you know yeah it's special special bureaucratic language that if you're not used to it puts you to sleep and if you are and if you are used to it you read through and go oh my gosh they said that um so it was it was kind of interesting um you had some uh, comments before we got started about uh about this language we, we use in the quality world sometimes <laughs> yes oh yeah yeah exactly it's it's um you know you're not allowed to say uh the oddity was lying through his teeth but you are allowed <laughs> to say um the oddity was unable to provide objective evidence that dot dot right. dot uh there were places that the assessment that exactly those words were used in fact Mm -hmm. um and all that means is he said something but he got a darn shred of evidence to back it up yeah and you know (laughs) he he might not be lying maybe the dog ate his homework who knows yeah i mean stuff happens Mm -hmm. um and and you know stuff it is it is an observable fact that weird things happen during audits too. Mm -hmm. So, um, but so the background here, the, um, the 
uh, grounds on which they conducted the assessment is um, that there was a <clears throat> recent law in 2020 that gave the FAA the authority to conduct assessments like this for any organization that holds what's called an ODA. Okay. Um, and an ODA is a, hang on, organization designation authorization. But what that means is that they are uh, officially designated, uh, Boeing is officially designated by the FAA to check their own work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, well, um, the, to do this, you've got to have a slew of agreements in place with the government and so on and so forth. Um, and because, you know, you can totally make self-inspection. You can make it work. I mean, there's no it's... human nature nor biases involved. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, as, as a little aside, I looked up where did this co program come from? And, um, <clears throat> basically. From someone's butt. <laughs> well, it, it's one of these things like like fungus that grows on you slowly, you know. Um, the uh, they um, they first started authorizing third party uh, third party inspectors working for uh, airworthiness back in 1927 when they actually had airplanes they had to check, and uh, there was. No one that knew how to check them, or only a few people. Okay. And um, and it, the thing is, it just slowly expanded. They, in the 40s and 50s, they said, okay, well, we'll let uh, companies do their own inspection for small aircraft and propellers. And in the 60s, they extended it to repairs. And in the 70s, they extended it to something else. In the 80s, it was something else. And I finally, got you. I got just, you. But yeah, it, it, it's, it's like, well, we let them get away with this other thing, and this isn't that much more. Wait, and you just described how the government at all levels operates. Well, I suppose I did, didn't yeah. I? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, <clears throat> and there you go. So uh, anyway, so yes, the um, there will be Boeing employees who, from time to time, go put on an FAA hat and conduct inspections on behalf of the FAA. And they are supposed to, <clears throat> there are you know, things that are supposed to um, protect this, uh, you know, and the things that will, uh, there's supposed to be measures in place so that their, um, their bosses won't retaliate against them for finding bad stuff. And so See, this on. is one anyway. thing that drives me bonkers a lot of times. And, and we've we've run into this a few times recently on the podcast talking about it. It's like it's it is as if people feel that we can completely mitigate human nature by putting a rule on the wall. You can't I mitigate can. human nature like you Thank have you. to recognize it is truly <clears throat> a risk. But like. I don't think any of us would put on our risk register that, you know, because this biggest issue I see repeatedly is like staffing. Like we're not going to put on the risk register that staffing is an issue because too many of the young folks come out of high school and college have no work ethic. And so that's the risk is that no one has good work ethic. You, you can't really put that. I mean, I suppose you can't, you, you can't could, maybe should, but we all know you can't put that on a right, risk register. Right, exactly. And it's kind of the same thing here. It's like, Hey, we're just going to, we're going to know that people have the potential to be biased and we're going to make a rule so that they can't. And it's like, yeah, uh-huh. See how well that works well, for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is that you can, and <clears throat> you know, you have just anticipated what I think is the main takeaway from this. And I was going to go into you know, more detail and I, I will, yeah. but the main takeaway from this whole year long report, which is that, you know, Partly it was in response to earlier quality problems that Boeing had had. Boeing wrote up a bunch of stuff that looked brilliant. And <laughs> it was, it just looked fantastic and it met all the requirements and it sat on the shelf. 
um, and they tried to implement it, but uh, did kind of a drive-by implementation. Um, and so it didn't penetrate, it didn't <laughs> stick. I got and you. that's that's it in a nutshell. So the so <clears throat> let's see, where was I? I guess yeah, I was um going to break down the yeah the, there were four parts four basic subheads that they had findings under okay um one was the overall boeing safety culture one was the specific written safety management system oh, okay um one was the management structure uh with respect to the guys who were the, the so-called um, UMs, unit members, who are the individual Boeing employees who are supposed to act for the FAA. Oh my and, God. you know, but there was a section about their management structure. And then there was a section for miscellaneous observations. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and, you know. They, they, they covered everything. It sounds like they, they cover. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It, it's you. I mean, you know, like it was a pleasure reading this in a sense because, because they really were very systematic about it. They were very thorough about it and you could just go, uh-huh. Yep. Yep. I, I lay this out the same way and I see what they're doing. Um, but my gosh, I was highlighting, you know, every other paragraph, <laughs> Um, so under the safety culture, <clears throat> the, the gist of it is that they got someone to write a safety culture document that said, our safety culture consists of, and it boring, blah, blah, <laughs> blah. And it, well, not just boring, complicated. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, right. And it had, it said, well, we've got a five part safety culture, and those five parts all had names. And so, you know, and, and they interact in the following way, and they interrelate in the, well, guess what? So the average this, Joe working for you is never going to read that, <laughs> nor understand, nor give a crap about it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And this is, this is what, what happened. They got the, their, um, the uh, the panel went and interviewed people and said, "So, um, tell us about your safety culture." Uh, and you know, people knew that there was something they were supposed to be quoting. Yeah, they didn't, but you know, which actually probably meant that they got worse answers than if they hadn't written anything. And it was just, you know, yep. Do you try to be? Safe? They might have said something meaningful, right? Yeah, I tell people this a lot when when we go through <clears throat> consultation implementation process. Folks are like, well, like they have to know the quality policy. Like, how much do they have to know? I'm like, and they have to know the objectives. And like, they don't need to recite it from memory. Like, if they can say something about how the work they do ties into the company's goals for quality, that's plenty good. In fact, I as an auditor prefer that to reciting the quality policy word for word. Same thing with objectives, like. I don't care if they know our top level objectives. Can can you tell me how you know you have problems in your shop? Well, yeah, if we get rejects out of this inspection, like, you know, we, we missed something five steps earlier. Boom. Good. I'm Bingo. happy. Exactly. Exactly. And this is so, so, but they said, you know, of the people they interviewed, some people remembered one or maybe two of the five parts. Oh, yeah. But, but even if they remembered the words, they they didn't remember the music. Didn't they didn't it. know they didn't know how they fit together. They couldn't use the words in the sentence. It was it was you know. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're gonna get that issue. Like no one's gonna remember this stuff. Right. They were I mean, exactly exactly. They were trying well, to they, overachieve, and this is what they got as a result. Yeah. You know, um, this is why I say that, and I have a college degree, and it's one of the reasons I say most college degrees are worth less than toilet paper, because you, <laughs> you learn how to talk smart and do dumb stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have, um, you know. No, I'm not saying all. Some degrees are worthwhile. No, no, no. If you have one and you love it, by all means, love it. Me, personally, I have never even opened the package it came in. Um, You know, <clears throat> 
I will say that um, it was always a very nice thing to put on uh, put on my resume uh, because you know I'm I'm sure that there are jobs where I would have been filtered out and not gotten mm-hmm. a chance to talk to them if I hadn't had something at the bottom of the resume there. Um, but I mean, my point here is was, you just no, 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 I totally, the I real totally, stuff. I totally get your point. I, yeah, I have, like you I've got to know the real world. I've told people before that you know one of the benefits of a <clears throat> um, of a good liberal arts education should be that you can make a convincing sounding argument for anything, no matter how stupid. I would totally agree with that. But I completely you know. <laughs> agree with that. I, um, look, I tell you, I loved, um, I look like I did uh, mock trial in college and debate my first year and whatnot. And like, I lo- not that I was a pre law or nothing like that. I just like the stuff. And, uh, like it. yeah, it's a, people don't realize <clears throat> the valuable skill. Like I, I know this kind of off topic, but maybe it's not. It's like, people don't realize the valuable skill in being able to argue a point you totally disagree with from that perspective. Yeah. Like when you can do that, like that makes this so much better. Like if these numbskulls with too many degrees in education in their head could just get themselves in the position of the dude doing the work, take the theories out of your head, just look at application. Yep. <clears throat> it just kills me because I, I know that people get hurt. I know that people lose their jobs. I know that all sorts of bad stuff happens because too many folks with manager at the end of their job title want to sound sophisticated and smart. Yep. Yep. In any case, I'll, I'll get off my okay. soapbox. No, fair enough. I'll, I'll, I, I, I will. There's, there's part of the findings in the safety culture show up again in the SMS and I'll discuss them there. And sure. Maybe I can get halfway through the SMS before before I, uh, <laughs> you know, the two of us both go off again. Oh, um, so <clears throat> on the SMS, um, the so that's the that's the actual details, the written safety management system. Okay. They said, okay, it's too complicated. It's always changing. <laughs> um. They and when they they got a they got a document that uh, had had been updated like the day before it was given to them with and the uh, description of change was general rewrite. No traceability to whatever had been there before. <laughs> oh, dude, um, you are killing me. Okay. And, so uh, Caleb, I guess, is is probably like, yeah, I guess he can't talk here. No, um, I, I can talk. Oh, hey. Well, you know, we were talking about this crap, you know, kind of recently with like, ha, ah, in any case, it just it, it just gets on my nerves, this type of stuff. It's like, you know, we, we think about like Boeing, like, oh, man, they, like they've probably got like this top notch system. Everyone's super well trained. They're probably walking around in lab coats and like, no, it's just people <laughs> like us. It's They're just people. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. That's the thing. You know, the, the, um, when they interviewed people about the safety management system, um, they got a lot of people telling them straight up, I think this is just another management fad. You know, it's not going to stick around. Why should I bother learning it? Um, you know, it's, and then here's the, here's the thing that starts getting, you know, beyond just the superficial stuff, people said, besides, we already had a system. Why do we have to replace it with a new one? Oh, okay, you already had a system. Let's talk about that some more. Well, (laughs) as they start digging into it, yes, they already had a system. All of the written procedure documents still reference the old system. Yeah. Not the new one. Um, The, the, they've got Reporting dashboards for both. So, which one are you supposed to check? No one actually understands what the reporting dashboards are doing. Um, the we're uh, making pretty colors so a manager can <laughs> print it and say we're doing good. Yeah, they're well, not just pretty colors, but green. Oh yes, specifically. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was that red over there? I know uh, that's, that's, that's the that's the tolerance that, on it, so it'll turn green. 
that's that's the that's the wrong dashboard. You should be looking at this one over here. <laughs> um, and you know they had, um, everyone had to go to safety classes, but the uh, the classes didn't actually require a test that you'd learned anything. Caleb, I think we got a new client in mind, don't you? <laughs> like, it sounds like they need TQA Cloud. You, you, oh man, Caleb disappeared on us. In any case, yeah, yeah, we need that to would these folks TQA Cloud. They, they totally need our software. We've got the quizzes LMS feature integrated. <laughs> there you go. Oh my gosh, <clears throat> <laughs> this just cracks me up. Like, I, I know I'm laughing and like making light of it, and like, <clears throat> but oh. no, the and the, the multiple, you know, the multiple reporting systems. Uh, is is a lot of it because it means that things are complicated enough that people don't actually know what to do. And here's the, you know, and this is why, okay, everyone's got their own focus. And for me, it's, it's usually about system and system implementation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that I know, you know, we're always told when you do a root cause analysis, you have to assume that everyone is doing his best. You can't just say, oh, well, it's all because Joe is a jerk. You're not right. that you're not. A, the thing is, I even believe that. I think no one ever goes to work Monday morning saying I'm planning to do a bad job today. You don't do that. People want to do a good job. Mm hmm. If you make the system so complicated that they don't know how to do a good job, that's yeah, the system is defeating them. I I agree. I mean, <clears throat> I would say I probably minorly disagree with you that I have worked with some people who I truly believe like just showed up to work with the intent of being malcontents and miserable human beings. But in those instances, the root okay. cause comes down to a failing of management to discipline and enforce and so on and so on. Right. But sure. And, 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 even then we know the root cause isn't that, you know, this dude over here is a lazy bum. The issue over here is that management happily pays him to be a lazy bum. Right. Right. And, you know, was he a lazy bum 20 years ago or did he develop that attitude because of frustration and this and that? Well, there's some of each. Okay. Yes. I realize in reality, you know, sometimes no, yeah. I get you saying with a root it cause, has, you can't put that on there, but you yeah. can't put that on there. And 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 my point is that <clears throat> certainly most of the time, the overwhelming amount of the time, people want to do a good job, and if they can't, it's because the system won't let them. Yeah. No, and totally so agree. this is this is the you know the the results from the the management system were the ones that hit me the hardest when I was reading them. I'm sure. Anyway, going on from there, then there was a section about the management structure, um, which <clears throat> was the structure that uh, is supposed to ensure that if if you're the guy who has been designated to do the FAA's inspection for them that you can actually go do that and not get in trouble with your manager for slowing the process down. Okay. There's gotta be some, uh, yeah. barriers in there. Yeah. Um, and the, <clears throat> um, Look, I talked about uh, this just in a shop with like normal inspections, even when the inspection sure. department is totally separate in mm -hmm. command structure in the company from production, like you still run the risk, just inner human, you know, interpersonal interactions, the way people behave, like right. you may go get a beer with him on Friday night. And like, do you really want to ding him on this crap when you're going to go? I, yeah. Just yeah. Can't. Yeah. It, it's, you know, we're people. I know. And I mean, all the, all the years that I was doing <clears throat> internal audits, it was exactly that. Cause usually it was small companies and mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's, you know, part of, Part of what I tried to do as an internal auditor was <clears throat> to make a game out of it, to say, you know, yeah. effectively, look, you and I both know that at the end of the day, what we want is what's going to be best for, you know, we want the company to survive. So we both still have jobs. Yeah. And <clears throat> but 
we've got to go through this game. And if, you know, if I catch something, well, that's part of how it's played. And then we go do we go respond to it. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, you. It's tough. Ultimately, people it's are going tough. to be. It is. It is. Anyway, so as not to make it worse, there are supposed to be, you know, measures in place, as I say, for uh, to to ensure, you know, absence of retaliation. And the uh, the report <laughs> gave Boeing credit for saying, um, "You have definitely made it harder to retaliate than it used to be." Oh, harder well, that... doesn't mean impossible, and gee, it's nice to know that it's better, I guess. Um, but it just seems I, like all the effort you spend trying to m- make it internal. Now I can't speak to the details here with yeah. Boeing, but I know from trying to do it with internal audits and inspection processes before, sometimes it's easier, cheaper, faster, and better just to contract someone to come in and do it. Yeah. Sometimes it's not, but sometimes I, it is. And I wonder if this might not be one of those times. I wonder if it might not. I'm, Again, I'm not privy to all the, the yeah. manifold details any more than you are, but I totally see your point. Um, the let's see, what else did they say? Um, they did say that there <clears throat> were. They talked to members who thought who thought that they had been retaliated against. Okay. Um, so okay, it, it's harder, but apparently not impossible. The um. Uh, one of the points where they said no objective evidence was that Boeing said, oh, we actually just recently introduced a totally new reorganization. Oh. Couldn't actually show it. <laughs> and everyone was still reporting <laughs> to their old managers. Oh, and um, but 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 there's a totally new organization. It's just a mystery organization somehow. Um, and. <clears throat> oh, one of the things that I was going to mention earlier uh, about reporting failures i said you know there when there are multiple places that you can report them and it's not clear where it goes Mm -hmm. most people that they talk to uh most people on the floor didn't want to use any of those methods they said if they if they didn't they never got feedback that something had been responded to. They didn't trust that the method, that the system was tracked yeah. or that the method worked. Yeah. And and when they were told, oh, this is an anonymous reporting, they didn't trust that it was really anonymous. Yeah. Um, they, said, they said, okay, well, what do you do if you find something wrong? The overwhelming majority said their preferred method of address, of, of reporting something, if they found it wrong, was go tell my manager, which now my training not a in the terrible ISO answer 9, in the ISO nine thousand world is yeah that's not a terrible answer. The only risk, and I had to keep reading the report before I understood why this was a risk, is if you do that, you there's no guarantee it's going to get written down and tracked because nope. your manager might remember to do it and he might not. Yep. This is and, why, like, again, I, I swear every single episode, this is a topic I talk on is like, you can not reasonably over document non conformances. <laughs> like, people should be rewarded for documenting a non conformance, not punish the person who screwed up, reward the person that found it. You do that consistently, it only takes three months to turn a shop around. But you have to consciously actively reward folks that report non-conformities and not punish the ones that screwed up they'll get yep. a hint if after yep. three months folks haven't got the hint they'll probably weed themselves out to be honest yeah yeah um like there's a, totally a talking talk about before it's like there's a system we put in place years ago called a uh, not, well, sorry, we didn't put it in place. Actually, we came in right after it got put in place and I got to watch the effects over a while they called a good catch card and I mean, seriously, the last time I audited the facility, like the folks were saying that they would had a problem that folks would make up findings because they had a <laughs> reward system associated with finding things. And so people <laughs> would crumple up pieces of paper and throw them on the floor, take a picture of it and say, I found litter and I picked it up because they just couldn't keep finding issues. The only <sighs> thing I even could ask a question on when, last time I went through and did an audit for them 
is, and my, by the way, this is the one and only time I've ever told a shop, guys, you should just self-audit. There's no sense in paying me to come out here anymore. Right. Um, unless you, you start finding some issues. Um, is I saw drips of water on the ground. And I was like, oh, well, what's leaking here? Like, oh, that's not leaking. That's condensation in the pipe. You can tell where the oxygen and the nitrogen and everything else comes out based on where along the, the pipe you get water condensation. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. I can't find nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but they created such a good culture of rewarding these things. So they had what they called a good catch card and everyone filled it out. And so they, they had a few cool incentives associated with it. So if you're someone from your entire department filled out a good catch card for the month, uh -huh. your whole uh, department got Chick-fil-A for lunch. Nothing big, just something okay. small. Right. If right. Any right. of those right. good catch cards got turned into a corrective action. Well, you got recognized in front of the whole company for finding something that resulted in the corrective action. And then they gave you a gift card. I mean, it's, it's not much, it's little stuff, just little, we're talking about like a $25 Whataburger gift card, but yeah, <clears throat> you're the guy that everyone is looking to like, man, why, why can't I be like that? Well, you need to find problems and try to fix them. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. This changes the culture. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's yeah. So the uh, let's see the fourth category was miscellaneous and that was that you know that was me up. well it was it was like other I, th I think they said other topics or something and half of them were uh, advice for how to interact with the FAA in the future technical stuff about that uh, there were a couple of them which said. Um, you're supposed to be getting input from pilots about what works on your planes and what doesn't. And um, it seems to be handled inconsistently. If the pilot talks to Fred, it gets addressed. But if he talks to Sam, it mm -hmm. doesn't get addressed. So fix that. Okay. Um, there were, there were, and then there were some other just general observations um one of them was that uh <clears throat> you know you're talking about incentives and mm -hmm. um one of them said well we made um participation in the safety management system part of the annual incentive program oh. you, know, you get part of your bonus for going to classes remember these are the classes oh, where they okay. don't check if you learned anything but they so but we incentivize the, good pencil whipping um and this is one where i normally the kind of thing you're talking about with incentives i think makes total sense but i actually yes. am a, a, not so sure that i agree with it in terms of the safety system, because I would want to say safety should be more important than the money. I agree. You what you're going to wind up with here is folks that are getting hurt. They know they've got a bonus coming. And so they're just going to sweep all this crap under the rug. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, the thing is that you <clears throat> exactly, you don't want to, you know, Safety should be non-negotiable, and as soon as you pay somebody for it, you've made it negotiable. Yep. You know, because then it's like, okay, well, the, safety is going to be this much of my bonus, but you know, if I'm willing to give up that, I can get, crank out five more airplanes, and that'll more than make up for what I lost on the safety side. Yep. Ah, who cares about the safety? I'll I'll be ahead in the long run. No, that's the wrong way to think about it. Look, if if we're not looking at this as people, and again, like I just can't overstate. Like anytime yes. we talk about safety, like we're not treating people like people. We're treating them like emotionless units of production, and they're not. No, they're no, weird. They're, they're eccentric. They're angry. Yeah. They're happy. They're 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 people. This is this is you know, I have I have I have been in training class, safety training classes, uh, rolled out by whichever company I was working for at the time, uh, where they would say, it's important to uh, follow the safety rules because accidents cost the company this much money. Well, yeah, stop. Okay. I don't give a it's, crap. It's true that accidents do cost the company that much money. That's not why. The reason you, 
have to care no. about this is that these are human beings and they're getting hurt. Yes. And you I, don't um, want people to get hurt. You know, that I am has very to... less than politically correct on this. Very much less than politically correct. And I don't care because it works and it's true in most situations. You go into any shop, the majority of the folks in there are dudes. Yep. And the majority of the guys in there are oftentimes kind of tough type dudes. Yeah. And so I'm going to come in with all of this sophisticated language about safety and caring and responsibility and da, 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 da. And they don't give a crap. Yes. It's all the yeah. stuff I'm supposed to say, but like, this is what I do to start a safety meeting. So we're like, guys, how many of you want to be here right now? You get kind of a couple <laughs> of hands. I'll be like, um, I find this crap just as boring as you do. And I do it for a living. I get it. Totally get where you're coming from. But listen, how many of you, how many of you married? Three quarters hands go up. All right. If you ain't married, you, you probably you got yeah. someone, right? All right. Right. Like, what are you gonna do when you go home tomorrow and you tell your wife, I'm gonna be put on restricted duty for like the next two weeks and my paycheck's gonna be cut in half. How are you gonna handle telling your wife that when she asks, Well, what happened? Well, I, I fell off the forklift. You just see how well your wife handles that. You just see how well that goes over. Trust me, you got more hurt coming at home than you got here. So how about you tune in and listen to me so it don't happen to you? I love it. I love it. But it's true. And I'll be like, it look, works. what are you going to do? Like, and I'll point to one because usually I know something about someone. I'll ask him like, all right, so your kid, whatever, he's he's in football this year, right? Yeah. You go to every game every Friday night, right? Yeah. Well, you still plan on going up the top of the bleachers when you got a cast on your leg next week? You still going to do that? No? All right, cool. Well, man, I ain't going to get hurt. Huh? I mean, I I'll take care of myself. I'll be like, buddy, I've done over 70 accident investigations. Not one time, not one freaking time did someone ever say, well, you know, I thought that was a little risky, but I thought I'd try it anyways. No one ever says that. They always say, it just happened. So when you get hurt, it's going to be a it just happened ordeal. And there's going to be a thousand little things you could have done about it. But, you know, I don't yep. know how I would put any of that into auditories. I don't know. And if you can help me, we can change the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think don't be a dumbass works. <laughs> don't be a dumbass probably doesn't work. No. no. Um, let me get How back like to you to on that. that on it, one of these boards on the shop floor, like big letters, two foot tall. Yeah. Don't be yeah. a dumb. Well, and then although, the caption says your wife. Yeah. Well, you, you know, hurt. it's, it's, um, it, although it's, it's like if you, uh, you know, Chris Paris's website, he's got a, um, he's got, uh, these, these sort of, mock uh poster motivational posters oh yeah and um one of them is for iso 45001 health and safety you know where the poster says maybe don't kill people <laughs> <laughs> yeah you but know. i mean but it really is like a i mean this is all silly but it's a real point though so oftentimes when we think about safety we immediately go to measuring our success and I've never seen anyone improve a safety program by measuring how successful they are at avoiding accidents. The only folks I've ever seen that have a successful safety program are the ones that measure how often they fail and react to when they fail. And I mean, I know that sounds like, oh, well, that's just like two sides of the same coin. It's like it's not. I mean, if, if we're going to be preaching how many days we had zero accidents, zero injuries versus preaching how many times we found issues that we mitigated before someone got hurt. I mean, it, it just it's a difference in in how we receive the information. I mean, it's like, again, think about like at, at home again, we're all most of us are probably married or have at least had a significant someone before. Yep, and yep. it's like if your significant someone just goes, you know, complains about something in the house, you're probably not motivated to do anything about it. On the other hand, if they come to you with a request and tell you, hey, I need some help with XYZ so that I can ABC, you get that same type. You're probably more willing to do it. You're a little happier to do it. And you feel like you did good by doing it as sure. opposed to, well, I only did it to keep from getting yelled at. 
Like yeah. it's a difference. Yeah. You get the same difference in the workplace. You want people to proactively find problems and solve them, but it makes no, it's no mystery to me that they had all these issues. Like you talked about the report said culture. Oh, well, that's a real small one to fix. Oh, the written documentation's messed up. Hey, our culture, our procedures, mm -hmm. yep. uh, the management structure, you know, where we got folks and, and who reports to who. And, <clears throat> and there's this whole other just little miscellaneous stuff. So it's like, oh, so what you're saying is you failed terribly in every aspect. <laughs> yeah. And it's, <laughs> it's, you know, the, <clears throat> I, I, I ran across, um, it was actually after I had posted my, uh, my blog post about the, this FAA inspection or, or review, um, uh, someone pointed me to a place where someone had, there's a website that collects conversations about avionics okay. topics. And that's and, that Lee Ham News? Uh, no, this was, uh, hang on, let me find it here. Uh, what did they fun. call it? it. <laughs> AirlinePilotForums.com. Hmm. Anyway, and some guy went on there with an obvious burner account um, <clears throat> saying, <laughs> you know, saying, I work at Boeing. You shouldn't believe me because I'm not going to tell you who I am. So I just some lunatic on the internet. But I'm system looking at documentation that right now. Yeah, the system documentation actually says what happened to the four bolts on flight 1282. Um, and he goes through details the fact that there were two different reporting systems. And things were opened in one, but all the discussion was in another one. And then when it got down to they'd finished the work and needed to have a reinspection, it was so much trouble to have the reinspection that they said, well, let's just classify the work we did as something else so that it doesn't trigger the reinspection. Oh, okay, yeah, we can do that because it's no big deal, right? And so there was no reinspection because reinspections were such a pain in the neck. <laughs> Man. You know, and that's you know, too, like, this is what you talk about when they were going onto the shop floor. Like I always love going on the shop floor. I always love going on the shop floor in these audits. And I just want to talk to folks. I'm going to ask them, well, why didn't you? I just love asking why questions. I mean, I sound like a little taller. Well, why, why? Yeah, and right. the point I'm trying to get to is I want them to get to what's the pain in the butt that's preventing you from doing what you're supposed to do. Cause I'm going to assume kind of like you said, most people will do the right thing in most situations, provided it's reasonably easy for them to do the right thing. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Not, not if it's a pain in the ass though. Yeah. No. And it's like, okay, cool. Well, whatever we want people to do, we should make it easy. You know, someone said <laughs> the, the, the best way to make sure your process is followed is to make following the process, the easiest way to get the job done. So that going around the process is actually a lot of work. Yes, yes. If you, you want to make do, it very difficult to search and navigate. That, right. If you can do that, then, yeah, people will follow the process because it's easy. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you'll have some outliers who just like to cause trouble. But, man, yeah, not if you so can many. get the majority of folks on board, we're good. Yep, exactly. Oh, geez. Anyway, well, so this is this is why, I said, like I said at the beginning, you know, for my money, the the basic – problem is that they tried to address their earlier problems by slapping a coat of paint across the top rather than actually diving down to the working level you know where you've got thousands of people actually bolting these planes together and working at that level and yeah. the thing is they're the ones you need to address you don't need to persuade somebody who sits in an office in chicago yeah. You need to persuade the people who are actually on the floor with the rivet guns. Because, you know, if the office in Chicago falls off the face of the earth, no one will notice the difference. No. But the guys with the rivet guns are what's making the plane either work or not work. And that's yeah. where they should have started, and that's what they didn't do. Well, I think that is probably a good spot to end this, because I can't say I agree with anything more than that. <laughs> I mean, 
So this there will kind of be a good good way to wrap up our uh, Boeing conversations. And this is good. Like this really helps put a lot of the other pieces into context. And like I say, I mean, this is these are problems we all deal with. I mean, every yes. one of our shops, we all have these as potential issues. And it's like, yep. yeah, yep. this stuff matters. So, man, I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you Absolutely. coming on. Let me know when. Let me know when you when you sell your software to Boeing because I think we, <laughs> I think they really need it. <laughs> Will do. Will do. All, All right. right. I appreciate Great it. Michael. talking to you again. You too. You bet. Bye bye. All right. Well, that is it for today's episode, folks. Really, thank you for tuning in. If you haven't, obviously, we want you to click like, subscribe, all the good stuff. It really does a lot to help us to know what content to put out and what you're liking and what's helping you. If you've got any questions, feel free to uh, to email us, contact us, comment below. We'd love to hear from you. So you guys, you take care. Here we go. Let's try it again. <laughs>